What's up guys, Raiden from Team Raiden and their games. And I'm here today to bring you a deck profile tournament report guest upload to Innovation Yu-Gi-Oh's channel. Some of you may know me already because we share similar subscribers. If not, what's up guys, I'm Raiden, like I said, giving you a deck profile of Spellbooks Invoker Wind Witch. Sounds kind of crazy, sounds kind of bad, but I, got, I was undefeated in my locals in Queens and you know, I think it's pretty good. So let's get started. And here we go. Thanks a lot, Chris, again for the upload. And let's get it started. So, Spellbooks have fallen on the map with this new meta. And uh, because it's just too fast. But now with certain support cards like D Barriers and more Spellbook, well, more Spellcaster support, sort of, we can uh, do more, much more with this deck, although it's still a little bit slow. Need support cards. So we're starting with three Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, aka Blue Boy, the only child that you're allowed to play with. Hey, <laughs> don't max these. You have your fairy tale snow for your macabre target, your triple aliester, the uh, invoker, obviously. You have your triple wind witch ice bell, your triple wind witch glass bell, and your double wind witch snow bell. Can't wait for the additional support coming out. So we have double. Magical Meltdown helps you get to Aliester much faster, much very, very, very important because it's literally one third of your deck. It's one of the three engines. Then you have uh, Double Wonder Wand because these are all spellcasters that for Maxi. And you don't like this build. You usually spell books like having Blue Boy on the field. You do not in this case. So once you do Blue Boy, you do Wonder Wand, get your draws, or do you do uh, Aliester, Wonder Wand, get your draws. You have a Regeki. Double instant fusion because you need the you just need to fuse everything. You get invocation double of course. Spellbook of life, spellbook of power because he's shiny and ulti and stuff like that. Your triple spellbook of secrets, double spellbook of fate, double spellbook of the master, double grand spellbook of tower. Your one spellbook of eternity. For you guys who know when I do my spellbook deck profiles, I always swear by two. In this case, you don't have much space because all the free space you would have had, you're running engines. So you can't, you don't have much space to run with. So Eternity at 1 is okay because of the support you have in your extra deck. And for the traps, you run Trench Tribute, Double Dimensional Barrier, Strongest Trap in the game right now, and Vanny's Emptiness, another strong trap, which I think it's one of the strongest in the game right now also. Unfortunately, it's not at 3. I missed it when I was, it was at 3. But hey, we well, can't do anything about it, right? I'm giving you a Torn Report right after this. It doesn't take too long because you know how spell books always take like 50 turns to do stuff. Ah, let's do this. You have your one that goes to Emerald, one Castell, one Lightning Shidori. Why Lightning Shidori? Because people haven't seen this card in like ages. Your Wind Witches, Wind Witches. They're Wind, level fours. Well, some of them level fours. You can do a Lightning Shidori. Well, only one of them, but still, you know what I mean. You get your Glass Bell out, two out, or you get you have one on the field. You Norden, get the second one on the field. Overlay. Really easy. Starter's Dragon, target for level 8. You have your Clear Wing Synchro Dragon with that Ghost Schmizzy. You have your Winter Bell, Omega. This is what I'm talking about with Eternity. You have Omega because Omega can get back your banished cards. If for some stupid reason you banish your Eternity, you can't bring anything, you can't bring Eternity back with Eternity. And since I only run one, Omega lets you get back Eternity if you ever need it. You have your Crystal Wing, of course, because I can't afford another one because I'm getting married and stuff like that. You have your Norton, your Caliga, your uh, Kakaitis, your Double Mikaba, and your Double Raijin. So, for the tournament report, uh, match one was actually Wind Witch Artifacts. Game one, I faded his Crystal Wing, and then he bricked after that because he was sitting on Crystal Wing. Game two, I faded his first Crystal Wing. He made a second one, and a, a turn later, I faded that, um, that second Crystal Wing. So, he scooped after that. I mean, most people only run two, so I guess that's why. Uh, match two was uh, Invoker Zoo. Game one, a D barrier, Raptor play. So I he tried to Raptor or whatever, D barriered it. On my turn, I special summon Makaba for game because uh, when I attacked, he activated Quick and Mirror Force and I sent D barrier with the effect, banished it. Game two, I chained D barrier to in Invocation. When he activated Invocation, I did D barrier. I chained Fate to banish Invocation. And then I took out Omega to return my banished books. And when he activated Invocation again, I uh, faded that too. So then he had no left. Special Summon Fairy Tale to uh, 
a fireball monster took out, but I put it in defense mode face down and he scooped. The third match was actually oh that's my side. The third match was uh what was it? It was Zoo Zoo Zodiac Pure Zodiac. So game one, the maxi challenge. He pushed because I guess he didn't draw that well. Uh my turn are get keyed. I summoned Crystal Wing, Spellbook of Life, the Winter Bell. I had Fate active for the next turn, and then when he used Barrage, I banished it and I won. Uh next one was game two. He I drew Blue Boy and Ice Bell. I special summoned Blue Boy with for the generic spell play to get a uh, spell fate live. Wonder Wand, draw two. I spell play into Crystal Wing, Invocation on Blue Boy and Aliester for Raijin. I spell Book of Life uh Winter Bell back because of the whole Crystal Wing play. So I can at least have a spell book of spell caster on the field. I barraged him. Uh no, he barraged, so so I faded him on his turn. Whoa, sorry about that. The battery's dying. I yeah, I faded his barrage. He wrapped tiered into Tiger Mordor to activate the effect. Crystal Wing negated it and destroyed it. Then he did the Northern play for it to get Rai Jin for scoop. Uh game the last game was Six Samurai, <laughs> embarrassingly enough. But he was uh, undefeated. So I game one, I faded the level two tuner. I don't remember what the name is. But uh I faded him. He bricked. Game two. Went to time. The only reason I won was because of the cheap life point damage from Winter Ball. MVP of the game. MVP of the entire tournament was actually uh, Fate, D Barrier, Crystal Wing, and Raijin. Fate must always be live or Spellbook's basically the, the engine in your deck. So guys, the last part this seemed a little scripted because I had to write everything down my notepad. But this is Ryan from Team Ryan Dark Games. Upload on Innovation Yu-Gi-Oh's channel. Thanks a lot for your, your support. Thanks a lot, man for uploading this and if you want i have much more content much more deck profiles and much more everything literally on my channel team writing and our games setting out